Okay, here we go. It is, uh, uh, we've been doing two Friday shows in a row. This is uh, super interesting. Of course, this is the More Talk radio show with Michael Kelleher and myself, Michael Zhao. We talk to you about what's going on in mortgage and real estate. Of course, uh, Michael, you were over at the Mortgage Bankers Association annual over in Philadelphia. That was super exciting, I'm sure. And uh, so let's talk about, you know, your experience there, what you thought was new. And if we get a chance to talk about it later this week, Let's talk about uh, what's going on in interest rates. I, I got some interesting information on what's going on in the life insurance part of capital markets. So I'm always uh, interested in talking and, you know, researching, talking, things like that. But, uh, you know, here we are at the beginning of the you know, morning show. So let's talk about the NBA annual, Michael. Yeah, it, oh, I mean, it oh, wait, was wait, wait, a... One more last thing, one last thing. Yes. If you happen to know, uh, we're also streaming on Discord. So it's, it's, you know, this is something that's new for a lot of people. So streaming on Discord. So join us on Discord if you'd like to come up on the show. Today, we'll welcome you up on LinkedIn because we were having some technical difficulties, but come on up. So with that in mind, let's go back to it. MBA annual. Michael, tell us how, uh, what was it like, you know, first of all, getting into MBA annual, about, you know, a week ago, you know, we were flying into to other places and um, security was tight. Uh, was it just as tight going into Philadelphia at, at this time? No, I, I didn't really notice uh, it being too tight at all. Uh, it, uh, you get into the airport and you go directly downtown and the scene is there are a couple of hotels around the convention center. The Marriott's connected to the convention center. The convention center is the size of a football field. So, I'm sorry, the size of three football fields. So what was happening okay. was it was a big lesson in isosceles triangles and everybody having their opinion if it's fast to cut across or go down and over because there was an overhead from Marriott into the convention center. It was big. So the only complaint that I heard logistically and everybody loved the brotherly love part. I think the Phillies being in the, the NLCS brought some right. com camaraderie there. And it was everywhere you see, like the people that are from Philadelphia make it known. And what is probably most known is Dan and Alan Middleman are, they might even have ownership in the Philadelphia Phillies. And for those that go to the NBA conferences, they have been the primary sponsor forever. I think maybe that's why we were there in Philadelphia. It was about time. Um, they have... The, the biggest meeting rooms there, and they also have the largest event there. So the event was uh, Maroon 5, which everybody was talking about. And wow. it actually started an hour and a half late because Stan had to come from the game. Uh, not because he necessarily needed to watch the game, but I think he had to do something with his leadership over there at the actual Phillies game. Came over. It was a packed crowd. Um, as far as the event goes, so there's meetings mostly in the Ritz-Carlton and the Marriott, and then there uh, were breakout sessions over in the area that I heard I heard feedback from. But personally, you know, I did not attend too many of them because I had meetings the whole time. It, it was new to me, meetings the complete time. I will say the right. politics did hit home um, before we get into the actual breakdown. First night, uh, get through everything. I go back to my hotel room um, and say goodnight to... Uh, my wife and my daughter, which I, you know, de depending on the time zones, it is different. This, I, I had some solidarity to do it. And yeah. um, I, that might be the wrong word, actually. So I had some silence to do it, right? And okay. so um, I had some silence to do it. I came down running a little bit late to get out to those meetings. And just as I get out of my hotel, just as my Uber is like three minutes away, around the corner comes a police car followed by about 12 cars going about five miles an hour and about a thousand people um you know dressed in, in waving the flag of palestine and so that oh. set, that set me back an hour significantly yeah because the, you know a cab would know to go around it the algorithm of the directions from right from ways right um but only knows to go through it so that, that was sort of a burden on the rest of the night um, in general. The, the traffic came to uh, – all night the traffic was a standstill. The message was, you know, very um, – people were nervous, right? Especially sure. 
and, and people were expressing family members that they actually knew that, um, you know, were, were killed in Israel and that they, they were alarmed that it was happening like right outside of our events uh, throughout the evening. So in the yeah. end, it, it was a, a peaceful protest, but it was really only peaceful in um, like physicality. The, wow. the message was not very, you know, it was loud horns and it was marching and it was um, yeah. somewhat. Did any of that bleed over into the NBA annual as far as the politics or, or anything? Or were they talking about it about when it, in regards to like how was it going to affect uh, trading? I mean, this week we didn't see very much flight to quality into bonds. So, you know, not being able to see the flight to quality into bonds um in fact we, <laughs> we saw rates going up so uh was was there any talk about that affecting mortgages or the viability of mortgages in the next year or or your meet i mean was there any talk about that i mean i'm not talking about in the breakout sessions i'm talking about like people just, no, I, you know, I know what you're saying politically it ended there like i i, I didn't see it like carry over uh, people weren't talking about it too much uh, there was so there was a lot i mean it, it was an un it was a little gloomy there in the sense that there were a lot of vendors who met with lenders not to do new business, but to renegotiate contracts. Right. Okay. There so was, be before you get into that part, um, as far as attendance is concerned for vendors versus actual participants, I know that uh, you and I have talked about like in uh, just post COVID, what, what, what were the, what the other shows were like, I, you know, you and I were at a show uh, about a year ago and it was mostly vendors versus people actually going to the show itself. At this, at the NBA annual this year versus last year, were there actual people going and setting up these side meetings, or were they, you know, and do, and you know, doing the meet and greets, or and and was it more heavily attended by attendees versus vendors versus actual, you know, actual mortgage bankers versus versus the vendors? So, as you know, the last couple of conferences, I felt I've been a very good mix, and I don't know if it's, be, I don't think it's more lenders. I just think it's less vendors, right? And not less flags, just less salespeople underneath the flags, like the fringe vendor salesperson, great, charming personality that like is on the end of the bench was going at a time, you know, during the height. And now you just see the core people that, you know, like the owners of these companies, a lot of owners. Um, so I did hear, and this is all hearsay, like uh, that we'll let you know on our show, but we do tell it a, a lot that I think other shows don't, don't have. So that's the value. I did hear the NBA was not particularly thrilled by the way, again, pure hearsay. Heard it secondhand. Uh, okay. <laughs> no sources. Um, don't run with this. Uh, but I've never heard it before. And I've been to many, many, many conferences of how many, um, like, le maybe it's lenders, maybe it's just people in general. But it's, it was actually a big thing up in Massachusetts, uh, the MBA. I've been part of, like, just a lot more old school, but never heard at the national level. How many people were not registered that attended the, you know, and met outside, but just did not go in and, and uh, to the yeah. That that to the seems event. to be uh, that seems to be like the the main objective for a lot of people, not just here at the NBA annual, but at the shows that I've been at too. That you know, the the venue they choose, if if the bar is big enough, you know, then everyone's at the bar. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? This conference was particularly different for me. Um, adopt the brand represents uh, three in particular clients that were there, Silk Title um, and, and Meeting with Consumer Direct, OPX America, which is b building a global captive uh, as an IMB, uh, you know, by IMBs that want to work together. And finally, um, SAP, who made the big PR announcement that they are going to try and go up against essentially ICE. Um, wow, really? And, yeah, and use... ERP platform to, if anybody has a chance, you know, it really would be them. Yeah. Can you explain or, ERP in English? You would ask that. They kept saying it. Does Michael know those acronyms? Um, it is <laughs> a, and it, it'll come to me, but what it is, is their cloud software platform. If anybody's really smart in the audience wants to come up and explain it, but it, in the, in the cloud, they have built a, cloud solution that um, is built for manufacturing is really what it is. So across the enterprise, every API within the software allows you to call it 
so that you can run data or display data um, in a way that is not very vertically stacked like the current mortgage industry. So when you think of like a chemical plant, right, they're able to display up on screens everything from what is being mixed to what the risk is to what the fire and safety and water sprinkler protocol is depending on which chemical mix were to occur go right or wrong if it goes right on that same screen you also have inventory of the chemicals what time the delivery is going to be going Does that mean that's that's er if i did that sure, right that's sure. erp is when you have a you know, i have google in front of me go ahead mike i'm going to get it right now yeah, okay, you go ahead. ahead so well, 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 um, um, so does that mean enterprise that the, resource planning, right? So, so it, does that it, mean that the, the, the process at the wholesale or retail, uh, actually, I should say at the IMB level, the independent mortgage banker, does that mean that the process from origination, if you're a broker, you're, you're, you're submitting the loan, uh, and then it's going to a lender and then this lender is processing and they're going pre QC. Uh, from approval to pre-QC to maybe docs to post-QC after loan funds, I should or for funding and post-QC. Uh, uh, I know there's going to be listeners uh, on the show that don't necessarily understand the loan process. It's not just getting the loan approved, but there's pre-QC and then there's funding and the recording, of course, for the realtors that uh, th that's what they that they stop their transaction at that. But then there's post-QC, which means the viability and the saleability of the mortgage loan uh, into either Wall Street or another investor. Uh, and that's the part that realtors don't understand because sometimes uh, a buyer will come across as, hey, why do I need to provide this extra pay stub? Why do I need to get another appraisal uh, after my loan has closed? That's because of these new rules that are coming across. So does that mean that uh, with this, with these new systems that it's going to eliminate some of the check the checker stuff, meaning that maybe some of the, the, the QC, uh, pre-QC or post-QC, um, steps may be eliminated as far as how many touches are going to be there as a result of efficiencies, or does that mean uh, easier easier buys and sells on uh, in capital markets by the reduction of, of of certain steps that need to be done? I, I have no idea what that means, by the way. I, I <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I should, I should so, know, but I don't. I, so, in layman's terms, one is a platform allows you to build. The, the unimaginable make it imaginable. So like when you typically get an LOS, you're really getting a solution in a box where you can customize some screens and write some input forms and make the fields look different or, or be better, right? But you can't truly develop on the core APIs into screens that you want and be able to produce those screens in days on a sprint. You have to go out and get a resource to you basically have to hire a team or you go out to a, a matchbox and you have them design it for you. So immediately you can begin to build consumer journeys and consumer experiences and workbenches for your loan officers, for your, I'll give you an example. Like the obvious to go out there and start a company is there is no facilitation for processors like in the ERP world. And what I mean by that in layman's terms is when you have a CRM as a loan officer, it tells you who to go out. Um, it helps you with tasks on follow-up. I mean, you know all about this, Michael. You, you, you've been selling forever. When you think about it, though, pro processors don't have that, right? Like when they order a VOE, they typically don't have a, so a task management software that tells them when to follow up and are they following up with the customer or following up with, with the work number. Right. And then built in that same, do they have a follow-up management system with the, with the customer? Are they writing down the conversations they had with the customer in a way that they can go back the way the salespeople have to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't exist today. So you would either, and in today's market for that, it would to exist, a vendor has to go out and create it. And then they have to be now another cost monthly to tell a lender they're going to be more efficient and the lender goes, I don't know if you are more efficient. We'd rather use that versus that you say building that versus oh. just land in the plane versus in yep. this solution, you would leverage what's already been built on the SAP cloud and the way it's worked with other manufacturing plants and see if you can start to customize work screens that provide not only that follow up, but eventually that 
data, so you said check the checker, can become mm -hmm. more traceable down the line for other entities because that everything from ordering the data to when the data comes back, that becomes an API that can be hit versus a bulk load that maybe needs to be digested or integrated. They gave one study that they found for every euro invested over there yeah, for certain solutions, let's say like the mortgage industry, it actually costs on anywhere from four to eight. So we'll say five euros for integration. So even though it's a euro bill, so let's say here, for every dollar bill, you're not getting that savings right away because it's going to be a total cost of five dollars because of all the integration that somebody's going to have to pay for and the lender usually has to pay for it they just don't know it yet well i i was going to say that's super interesting that you say that because um what that eliminates is loan officer hovering and you know if you're if you're uh if you're in that retail space your, your realtor calls you says hey what's going on with this buyer you said that it was gonna that, that it was gonna be three days and underwriting it's the third day now and we still don't have the approval or we don't have the, the clear to close or we don't have the whatever. And what I'm hearing from you right now is this type of, of management system uh, with the software that's involved eliminates loan officer hovering. And for some of our listeners that are going to listen later that are maybe realtors or retail loan officers, you know, you know that feeling is that you need to clear to close or you need the approval so that you can calm the seller down or and you can and you can just calm every, you can calm the nervousness of that buyer down and actually even eliminate IMB or mortgage company shopping as a result of this software because now uh, it, it's more reliable because it's, instead of loan officer saying, hey, can you work on this VOA? Can you work on this VOM? Or actually specifically the VOE or, you know, there's other things to check the 4506 and things like that. But what it sounds like that instead of, instead of trying to multitask, software is creating an avenue for processors to multitask and unfortunately it's going to eliminate some of the the internal processing positions but it's creating the efficiencies to where it, it automatically orders the the verifications instead of waiting for the processor to order it there's just some check there's just some um, boxes to check 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 you know, and then automatically it's going to go out and, you know, kind of like what um, Roostify might do with bank bank statements or some of these uh, other software can, you can do to check uh, asset information. You'll also be able to check employment information. And in doing so in this technology process, you can get in basically instead of spending three hours of working time by a processor. And I, and I don't know. I'm just trying to I'm just thinking out loud with you, Michael. You'll be able to get uh, income with employment you'll be able to get assets with banks you'll be able to get uh automated appraisal orders and finding out with that see so ryan down in the audience you'll be able to get uh, uh a, a title and escrow all done within your los doesn't matter whether it's going to be encompass point um or or any of the other softwares that are out there uh so instead of spending hours and hours and hours and having your loan officer hover over the processor and get it done it's just like hey you know what this is the turn time and you're going to have to wait in line. There was a, I used to work for, for a mortgage bank that's no longer in business, uh, WJ Bradley. They went out of business way too early. They had an awesome software in uh, that connected with uh, Encompass at the time. It literally told you it was three days. It was two hours. It was like, this is where you are in line with the underwriter. This is where you are in line for your processor to touch the VOE, the VO. I mean, you could see like, you know what? I want to be there, but and only the managers or the regionals could move you up and down the line as far as where you were in that queue. And it sounds like that software is creating this type of efficiencies where instead of just waiting for things in the queue, the automation is creating the, the, the ways to check uh, income, to check assets, title, escrow, appraisal. Uh, instead of having things done in three to four days, you might be able to get done in one to two days depending upon uh, a single processor actually getting to the conditions unless the software uh, with the, with their loan origination system is actually going to get to it. Yeah, yeah I don't, and let's, and let's sounds be like a pipe fair. Actually kind of me, but is this, is this, a, is this a, a possible reality that could be coming soon? Well, the meetings I was getting for them, they all had next steps and they were all the biggest, you know, uh, are some of the biggest lenders. But let's be clear. There's only I heard three companies that could possibly pull this off, anyways, and it is Oracle, Salesforce, or 
SAP or maybe IBM if if, if Oracle and Salesforce are actually the same. But um, it, it, any somebody talk, like somebody like Ryan and in, in the audience could talk more about it. But it, at the end of the day, it became a key for me to see where this industry is completely shifting because the conversations we were having were at such a high level of not just your traditional retail loan officer going out there and doing business. I mean, it's, it's very clear there is going to be a lot of consolidation. Um, some people I ran into think, you know, you might see 50 lenders really left. And what's, let's say on the other side of just things, right? And this is not a knock on them. This is just an interesting fact I heard yesterday. So ICE, and maybe this isn't fair because it's more of like their portfolio. It's not their actual like Ellie Mae. But ICE pr- reported 34% profits in the last earnings report, right? Okay. And wow. when you say 70 and 70% of their mortgage client base, so let's say it's Ellie Mae, is not profitable. Yeesh. Do, do, do you see where like that is a huge problem? And if that entire client base is going to um, go bye bye, go bye bye, yeah, that, that's, that's a problem. But it's not a problem for ICE. And I will get into that on How our is that next a show. problem if they lose their clients by, by attrition? By, by, by industry attrition, meaning that interest rates are going up, they're losing their reserves, and so ICE lose their, loses their customer because they're no longer in business. How is that, a pro- how's that not a problem for ICE? And I, I don't expect you to know the answer, by the way. I'm no, I, I do know about. the answer. I, oh, I do okay. know the answer. Okay. <laughs> do tell. <laughs> it's ICE. Ellie Mae is a fight for the middle. Our world is evolving enough where it, you, need to, you need to win on the outsides, on the bookends, which is your Wall Street market where the loans end up and the eyeballs. Yep. And winning that middle is not going to end up relevant long term. I'm processing right now. <laughs> if it's not going to win long term, how, how is ICE going to still be profitable so we'll talk about that in the next show they have made some acquisitions that people don't realize in um they they are becoming a data company and that's really like the moral of story like that is where it's going that is where sap will need to end up is it it manages your data because being that cloud company and formidable enough to go up against ice but other companies are not going to be that formidable and eventually when you win the data model the middle is you don't have anything you're stuck i mean they are stuck in the middle uh now for a long time they will be dominant right Mm -hmm. but event at the end of the day if they don't get out of the middle they will be replaced meaning just the lma part of of ice's plan and if ice can if ice can change it into something they they can keep calling it ellie may but it needs to be bigger than ellie may and i think obviously the consolidation, I don't know if that's an advantage for them or not, but th- there are people that are saying, unless the market moves somewhere different, you could be looking at, um, you know, you could be looking at maybe 60 le- lenders left, minus a couple, you know, minus some local ones that are profitable. I wonder if Encompass, I mean, like, I remember when Encompass initially began it, its uh, integration in, into the, the major market major mortgage space, what is it, maybe, what, 15, 16 years ago, maybe 17 years ago, and everybody was still stuck on point, and and, LA, and uh, Encompass was just this massive machine of just more things to do versus Calix Point. And now, they're, now they are somewhat the industry standard for a loan origination system, and with, if, if, if more lenders are exiting, uh, on the retail space, and we see, you know, I've seen like four newer loan origination systems pop up to compete uh, with brokers versus retail companies. And if you're a broker, you don't need all the back end secondary market stuff versus, you know, or Wall Street stuff to to, to track mortgage lending like the, you do with the uh, Ellie Amazing Compass. Then, I mean, th- does that is could this be a transition if mortgage brokers become more prevailing in that space versus the mortgage banker or the retail mortgage banker or you know like a loan depot or a prime or a uh, caliber or whatever you know they have a, they have retail large retail presence uh, versus the actual bank themselves so 
who have their own loan, own loan originating systems. So if you're losing if you're losing market share in the retail space and mortgage bankers, the top 100 is going to be knocked down to the top 50 because there's just not enough revenue to go around with the with the limited amount of housing inventory to be sold and no refis to be found. I mean, how can they? I know that that they're becoming this data company, but does that mean they're also going to potentially um, lose some losing that market share? What are they going to do with the? What are they going to do in the tra- in that transition of data versus how are they going to treat um, Ellie Mae's and Compass? In in like, are they going to make it better? Are they going to make it more efficient? Do you think? I mean, I don't. And again, I know you don't work for them, Michael, but but you're talking to some of these guys that are out there. And uh, do they do, do they just say you know what it's the encompass is the devil we know so if they start to raise their prices we're just gonna we're just gonna live with it. Uh, I don't know. There's like different. I mean, that's not a vacuum, right? I actually know somebody that left Encompass uh-huh. because they felt that the raising of prices at that time a couple of years ago was unethical in their view because they were trying to raise the price for acquisition of ice. So not there's no knock against ice. This was before, right? Sure. Um, so that person changed emotionally. There's some people that will change quantitatively. There's some people that will change just, or I should say, some people that won't change because they don't want to go through change. I, Encompass is still the best at integrating with everything. So until something can get there, you have to deal with, you know, it's limitations and then it's a really good software. If you don't have your own developers, I think with the, it's the top companies that would look for a different solution because when they update their SDKs and everything, things break and then they have two weeks slowdowns and cycles, but those aren't your, the companies I think you're thinking of. That's just at a higher level. It frustrates CIOs that maybe come from different organizations saying like thinking they're going to change mortgage. They come in, they roll up their gloves, they play some Beethoven, they get excited, they close their eyes, they visualize it, and then they run into all the reasons they can't do it because of the tech stack that, you know, the core is built off of, the compass. Mm -hmm. And then they say, I wish there was a way to, I mean, even, you know, hearing the advancements in the ability to have data um, in memory, and then what will eventually be in chip coming up very shortly. In the current Encompass and, and Black Knight model, you usually either need to pay for a data lake, data warehouse. Um, what that means, everybody, is you just export it into some external data storage so that you can either run your own customized calculations off of it or you can use like a Tableau and, and, and be an expert there, hire there. Everybody, the, I mean, the pro. My takeaway with this is the problem with the entire industry is they don't work together on the manufacturing of the loan. And at the end of the day, they're all creating the same thing. Sure. Their differentiators are product, the ability to sell, lead, um, culture, branding. They're, no one's really one with a special sauce of, especially long-term. And so... Think of all these. So the industry has a, a problem where they invest in a ton of money into items that don't help them advance their market share in, in the world. And they continue to fall behind the eyeball winners of the world, which is where the data is and where the ultimate winners are going to be. I mean, hmm. I won't say who I want to be involved with, with but right now, you know, Zillow is in one of like four people in the front seat. We'll put it that way. They have invested yeah. a lot heavier into mortgage than people think. And I'm not saying they're going to be the winner in mortgage, by the way. They're my and- decoy for you. But they control the top of the funnel and the eyeballs. It's interesting to say that I've been reading, and I don't know anybody at Zillow in this particular space I'm talking. You know, Zillow, just like any larger organization, Zillow is huge, right? But I don't know anybody that's joining Zillow as a retail originator right now. Although I've been hearing that they they they're beginning to enter into that space, and I'm, and and I'd be curious to find out because nobody I know in San Diego, unless they're going to have a, a a consumer a consumer direct division that in some place that 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 they're recruiting originators to, 
as a as an as a remote uh, position. But I haven't seen how Zillow maybe maybe making that transition or anything. But before we get into that part, whoa, whoa, this wait, is the wait, bottom wait. of the hour. Yeah, Hold yeah. On. This is the bottom of the hour of the Four Talk Radio Show. Uh, where we have this show typically every Thursday. This is the last two weeks. We of course we've been having it on Friday, but we're talking about the Mortgage Bankers Association and Michael's experience. We've been talking about also uh, as a recap um, technology specifically, and because of, of course Michael being the technology chair at the Massachusetts Mortgage Bankers Association, uh, he he has a deeper view and a closer eye on how technology works and what is actually going on. Uh, it, not only at the Massachusetts MBA, but on a national level, he gets to speak to a lot of uh, independent mortgage bankers, and he gets to speak to a lot of different vendors and so on and so forth. And for what he does at Adopt the Brand, he's also been able to uh, utilize all of his networking and relationships in order to get us a lot of the tea or the juiciness of inside information. Not necessarily verified at the moment, but uh, we can <laughs> always figure out how to verify. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll say, you know, we don't usually use names here. And so we we just try to put yeah, people we'll in the right direction. Um, so to answer your Zillow question, which I wasn't prepared for, but I would say, you know, Zillow really entered mortgage when they bought Mortec. So that was a strategic decision. Um, and then they obviously bought Mortgage Alliance of America, right? Okay. And wow. I didn't know that actually. So they do have a mortgage company, and they're actually one of the few that are. We could talk about that. So we'll talk about iZillow next week. But uh, mm -hmm. they they they're oh, actually increasing their loan officer count right now. Like while other people are cutting, they're they're growing, and the reason is they're they first of all they have a consumer advantage, but their customer direct model, and I'm not saying mortgage in general, but everything is actually working. For the first time in, in 23 years, data-wise, it is engaging consumers and getting consumers to either work with realtors or the loan officers to close. And so for that reason, it's working. And it, more than that is when, when everybody went from realtor.com, all those leaders mm -hmm. went over to Zillow. And so that's when Spencer Rascroft was, you know, I, I don't know how he left there, but yeah. he can, left because for, his for vision when he created it was don't know who Spencer yeah. is. Can you just say who he is? Uh, Spencer Rascroft was the founder of Zillow that believed your home should be treated as an asset. And it was the only, it started with, it's the only asset that you don't get a monthly statement on. And then it evolved to, People need to know what their largest asset is worth today. And that was such a simple sentence that it related with investors, it related with consumers, it related with the media, and it was able to build the Zestimate um, that has evolved from me being a loan officer, using it to determine if people are going to qualify for HARP, <laughs> all the way to what it is today. But um, he believed in consumer, uh, what I just said. And so when all of those, the, they had to keep making money as a public company and they came over a lot, you know, all those people that came from realtor.com were actually originally from Fannie Mae and other places like that worked under Bill Kelvey, who created the desktop underwriter. Um, and so there's been mortgage in their blood that never gets talked about since that day. Since I think I don't know the exact dates, what twenty twelve ish, twenty fourteen. So um, they have always, you know, had some mortgage in them. And uh, in the audience, Joe Darlene, when I created the idea of a mobile app in mortgage and brought it to mortgage, and, and that's my claim is I pushed it enough that it was adopted by uh, two hundred lenders in you know, our he's space. Raising uh, his hand, by the of way. Of course he is. He's going to finish the story. But 200 lenders, half a trillion dollars of mortgage volume, and over 32,000 loan officers were on it at one point. You know, he was working with, um, he had been on the advisory of how they were handling their mobile app. And so when he saw me, he's like, gee, somebody gets it. Uh, but even that, I'm sure he's surprised that nobody else really piggybacked on. And I think mobile's very 
undervalued in mortgage, but in other parts of the world, people who handle data understand that. So we're going to bring up Joe here, which means I'm going to mute my disc. No, the, I'm going to shut off the, how do I do this so I can listen to him? All right. I'm going to, I know what I'm going to do. Okay. So, uh, I got to take off my headphones on the discord, <laughs> but I got it. I got it. And turn on the volume here and mute my discord. Right. Okay. Well, uh, while you're doing that, I, I've got to be, I've got to be thinking right now that the there's programmers and, and economists that are working together um, on how to improve the Zestimate. Cause it used to be a joke that the Zillow Zestimate, you know, just like, come on. I mean, it's not how the house is going to sell. But, you know, sophomore technology is always improving. So I'm, I've got to be thinking right now that over the course of the next few years and in this last year, that this estimate probably is, is going to get better uh, as far as comparable sales. Not to take appraisers out of business or anything, but maybe removing the desktop appraisal at least and, and, um, and stuff. But anyway, Joseph, great to see you. Michael uh, brought you up, and I do want to have him finish this. I want to have you finish the story if you can. But uh, um, Michael, go ahead and finish. Um, I went in and I was on the board at Zillow from 2007 to 2012. My project was a Zillow mortgage marketplace. And so at the time, they really didn't know anything about mortgage. I kind of went there to help. I live in Seattle and I'm close to them, and I had a lot of executives that are my neighbors. And so they invited me on the board to go do this. And Spencer at the time wasn't the founder. He was just one of the, he was the CFO. It was really Rich Barton and, and Lloyd Fink who were the founders of Zillow. And um, Spencer was on there early, but um, he eventually, Spencer eventually became the CEO after Barton went off to do a couple other things, but he, Barton stayed on the chairman of the board. Um, now he's back as CEO. But yes, um, Michael's right. Um, in the early days of the Zillow mortgage marketplace, we didn't have APIs that from more tech or optimal blue or a few of the other product and pricing engines so basically it was a free-for-all from all the brokers coming on and trying to bid you know on 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 inquiries that came in wow and they were they were bid on inquiries that were really blind inquiries from borrowers because they did not zillow did not give up who the person was only if they contacted you would you then know who they were and that's how the first the marketplace started we realized early on that oh my gosh most brokers are undercutting each other they it was starting to be a huge, just like a yell fest for a while. So we got, you know, uh, Ivan and Darius from Optimal Blue, and we got the guys at Zillow or at Mortech to give us API so we could just now level the playing field. Nobody can lie. It's coming from your product and pricing engine, right? And mm -hmm. so that changed the game. And and then that led to the acquisition of Mortech. Uh, you're right, Michael. I think it was in 2014. Um, more tech became a Zillow company, and you know that's how it has been ever since. And Michael's right; they did acquire a mortgage company out of Kansas City, which was a consumer direct operation. Um, it was a big refi shop, and so when the refis dried up uh, again uh, prior to the 2020, uh, 2020, 2020 years, um, it was it was slow going for a while. Um, it was really kind of an outside company as they started to integrate it. Now they're very big; they're they're big in Irvine. They have a lot of operations throughout the country. And as Mike Del Petri would tell you, that Zillow's going big on mortgages here. They're hiring like crazy. Um, and Michael's right, they're like almost doubled their production as far as loan officers are concerned. So obviously Zillow has the eyeballs and, and that's kind of like the insight that Zillow's kind of going for. They think they can dominate mortgage. They want to be that portal to have everything all in one. Now, your your comments related to the Zestimate, the Zestimate was upgraded a couple of years ago. Matter of fact, they ran a contest for engineers, not just Zillow engineers, for any engineer outside of Zillow to develop and improve on this estimate. And they gave out a million dollar award for who could, you know, help help out Stan Humphreys, who was the guy that actually built the uh, the model for them in the very mm -hmm. beginning. And so um, they do have a next generation of this estimate. But yes, realtors bagged on that thing forever. They didn't want to, every time they went to the house, you know, the borrowers would say, well, that's not my estimate. You know, that's not what it is. And so uh, as they became more integrated and more integrated, now, as you can see, the Zestimate is powerful. The rental Zestimate was very powerful, good for DSER type stuff, but it's not an accurate number. Zillow never professed it to be an accurate number. It was never meant to be something you could lend on. It was an indication of value. So um, today, it's not like some of the other tools that are out there, like House Canary is definitely improved. Uh, uh, these static AVMs are going to be a thing of the past. Uh, there's a company called Plunk. 
uh, that I'm on the board of that is an AI company that does instant real-time analysis of the home, as well as all the photos of the home about you know the improvements that you can do to it, its reef model value, and its market analysis value. So there's a lot changing in that space. Um, and it's maturing, you know, monthly, especially with AI. So, so uh, Joseph, so Michael and I, we were talking a little bit earlier about how um, there there is, uh, you know, with ICE and Ellie Main and Compass and things like this. But I'm curious with all because a lot of people go to Zillow. I mean, that's more of a fact than anything else. And so with that. Um, they have you know they have a mortgage calculator just like a lot of mortgage lenders do however are they producing something a, a little bit closer to where you can actually you know put information you know to where zillow eventually can be a data collector and say we're going to collect information about buyers and people who want to refinance and we're going to input it so that they not only they can go and qualify for a estimated house it may be listed by a realtor at x price but the estimate is this. So let's get qualified on that estimate price or let's get qualified on that listing price. We'll collect the data and we'll either send it to our consumer direct division or we'll sell the or we'll sell the lead or we'll do both even. And yeah. because they can, you know, is that is that something you think that Zillow I'm sure they've already thought about it. The question is not whether they've thought about it. The question is what are they what do you think they're actually going to implement if that's something you're able to talk about? It's the whole, it's the whole, whole house thing. I mean, it's like they want to be your one top shop from realty all the way through to mortgage to closing to your whole home, you know, inventory system, right? Mm -hmm. like, like, uh, super over glorified milestones or something like that. Um, so they've always had that plan. That's what they've always wanted to be. I mean, Zillow itself was a zillion pieces of data about where you lay your head at night, which is your pillow, right? Zillow. Um, that's how they came up with the name. Do they, do they connect enough data to where UWM or Rocket should actually have some, not fear, but at least some sense of, hey, you know what? These guys are the real deal. They're actually, they're actually collecting the source versus we're collecting data from brokers. Um, we need to be aware that these people may be a player as they fund more and, and do more business that they're actually, their capital markets team is actually going to be uh, developing some reputation and some... Uh, not just reputation, but but you know, get, get some market share that that they need to have some. They need, to, they need they UWM and Rocket need to have their eyes on them as far as market share for what, who they're going to be selling into Wall Street and doing business with the GSEs. Can I jump in there, Joe? While you think of your answer, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So my takeaway, Michael, and I'll be happy to get more into it um, another show, but. We were when we were meeting with the largest of the largest. There's there's a new. I'd say the retail loan officer should be more fearful of Zillow. Zillow, right now, I think immediately, like next five years, they're already playing the game. And the game I'm noticing now is it's for these larger companies. It's less expensive to. Rather than going out there and getting loan officers and teaching them how to sell, getting them open house flyers and building marketing directors, CIOs, they are buying MSRs. They are buying large pools of mortgages, 12,000 mortgages, you know, $8 billion purchases, $40 billion. Uh, New Res just bought Computer Share, which is 800,000 homes. And I heard from somebody else that I, I spoke with that I will mention on the next show, but for now, I'll just keep it as is. They actually have. Um, almost a, a million homes themselves, I believe, and in their servicing. And as soon as they do that, the consumer immediately recognizes their brand. So if they can improve their monthly statement brand and their online portal brand to make the payment on your mortgage, one company actually pays and constantly knows how long each customer has been on Zillow. Or maybe not each, but they can put in levers and when they hit 22 minutes, they have a call center. They're immediately calling to try and retain that. And if the person falls behind, they have a foreclosure company to help them out with it. They have the title company to own the title. They have the, uh, the modification company to help them. And they own a real estate company to help as well. So I just found that very interesting. And that wasn't the only one that another one was 
saying how much they're perfecting, knowing when somebody's going to leave that portfolio, meaning pay off their mortgage, cash out refinance, and get them back into it. And Zillow is really, I found at the heart of it. They, they know, not only does Zillow know, but they know. And so the idea that when you buy leads, that they're not resold, retargeted, re-everything, you're, you're kidding yourself. It's just you, you almost have an advantage in time. And that time is very short-lived before the servicer is going to be calling. And I think short-term, these servicers are going to get much better at branding and using data to already be four steps ahead. The retailers will still have one spot, which is, yeah, Mike Keller has been working for eight years. He hustles his butt off. He sponsored my football game. I'm going to give him the, the business. But these digital unloyal you know, groups and they're coming in large numbers are are going to be captured that way. And I think that's going to be a large part of it until a Zillow can beat them in 2035 or 2040. But I think this new MSR game to me, and now go look at it, Google it. Look how many big MSRs are buying. Look how much rhythm. Uh, I just said that one. But um, these, yeah, well, that that's going to be some of the watch deal. because San, Sanjiv Daz, the former CEO of Caliber, is is a part of that. And I, I didn't even think about that, but for you know, we're we're gonna see if they if Sanjiv can leave them, uh, and and make them uh, into a, a top ten or top five player as well. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I think Michael's right. I think the other thing that is is that Zillow's playing the long game. They might already have been there if they didn't make that misstep with the iBuyer platform, right? Um, that fad kind of came and went, and I think we're still seeing that you know the iBuyer platforms today are dead or consolidated, and you know Open Door is still making a huff at it, but there's some smaller ones that are definitely hurting. Um, and obviously, inventory is at a you know 20 year low with what uh, almost annualized you know 3.79 million homes being traded this year in 2023. I mean that's the lowest it's been in a real long time. So I believe that Zillow has time and and they're all in on the bet with mortgage to finally bring this thing to full circle um, with all the assets they have. And, and and Michael alluded to most most likely, most likely most propensity to buy, sell, get out, or whatever the case may be. And you know, with all the cookies that you get when you land at Zillow, I'm sure in there is embedded the the tracking of where they've been and where they came from and all of those pieces. Um, a lot of firms have tried to do that. That that home hub firm, like I said, milestones is, you know, a great way that 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 they use on the realty side and also using on the mortgage side to kind of keep it active and captive to try to understand, you know, what you're trying to do. If you're going to Zillow and you're searching your home value once a week and then they get you on that drip and they get you, you know, it's constantly in your email box and everything else, they're betting on that they'll be the first ones to kind of help you through that stage of it. So they need to get some scale because they're not that large yet, but they're going to get some scale related to it. Um, you know, they're also betting on that after 2025 when rates start to come back down, that all the buyers in 23, 24, and in 25 will need to refinance. So that'll be a nice little hit for them. They've always been good at the refinance game. So, um, and Michael's right, the, the point where they get to being in servicing, the, the advancements in servicing technology, Michael and I were just at the digital mortgage conference. We, we saw all those presentations. We saw what people were doing. The most impressive presentations I saw there were add-ons into the servicing side of the space. Yeah, it's a joke. Like, just on the same page. Freedom, Harrington, New Res, you know, the, the, the three that come to mind for me, and then Rocket, UWM, even, like, a, a Faye servicing, right? Like, they, they have a, a distinct advantage of getting that refi even over the local loan officer, except for the local networking. Well, I think, you know, you look at what the, the second largest servicing software in the country is Black Knight since MSP. It hasn't been improved in 10 years, it seems like, right? Um, and a lot of these servicing people are using it. So like you said, they're using a lot of third-party services, a lot of pulling the data out of the, creating their own data lakes. They're trying to get really sophisticated and very smart, trying to help their clients. But like SLS that you just talked about, which was a computer share company that got bought by that got laid off, no, basically came out of the computer share network. That was really just the SLS group in Colorado, right? And because computer shares, you know, worldwide. So, uh, sorry, not just the SLS, but that's 800,000. Yeah, right. They think they have the right formula. 
They just went out and grabbed 800,000 homes, which probably was on a little bit of a discount too somehow, uh, versus what does somebody have to go? Uh, Bill's up here, and I respect Bill as much as anybody, a local uh, realtor with another cool story like you and I, Joe. I, I think he created the fractional buyer's agent back in 1992, um, paying, and I, it'll break out you know soon here maybe with these these new laws where you pay for certain services rather than like an a la carte i think that's what bill did but bill you, you do have a question right but you just come up to be seen <laughs> you might have been wanting to see bill yeah, you're on I, mute just so you know you to mute yourself too uh bill and i don't know if your question's for joe the big hitter um myself but we would love to answer it or maybe you just accidentally and maybe we're in your pocket but any, any questions for us bill all right, we'll send you down. If you have a question, you can come back up. <laughs> By the way, we're getting close to the top of the or bo or at the, at the bottom of the hour where uh, we got about four minutes left to the show. I have a question for oh, there goes Joe. I was going to ask Joe. Um, so yeah, I think that the the big takeaway for me at the NBA was the MSR, the, the groups that are doing uh, that are buying MSRs have a bigger data plan than you think they do. They have a very good idea of when they will call those borrowers and make sure that they can retain them. And if those numbers make sense, they're going to continue to buy large and large pools versus going out and trying to originate them or even correspond them. And then the way we get out of this is please come in at two o'clock. Loan officers, lenders need to let loan officers control their database because I I'm retargeting, retargeting, retargeting. That's all you'll hear from me. I believe in it. I think you need to retarget and then retarget that group. I don't think you need to rely on one marketing director. She, he, too busy. They could be the most talented person in the world. Um, and Catherine has, works with the most talented marketing director, maybe in mortgage, definitely on the pickleball court. Um, and... <laughs> He was, he was unbelievable at housing wear, but he really is. And, um, but he, you can't scale like him. You can't scale anybody. It's impossible. That's why we make software, right? And so these loan officers need to understand retargeting better. If you come on the two o'clock show with Jeff Simper, Mike McAllister, and myself as a loan officer, you will learn more in that one hour on how to get business in 2024, period. If not, go to Finlocker's uh, FinTech Friday. Look for the replay if you listen to our replay. But the direction moving forward, Mike, and I'll let you do the outro, is we are evolving this show where we are we are going to want guests on here like Joe just came up, but pre-planned, talking about the same subject throughout, some continuity, and get a show that people are really excited about um, that starts with the variety we do, but maybe tells a story like we just did about Zillow, where you have um, – and, and I and I do want to finish that, Joe. So I think I'm going to work with you to do a Zillow type story because I don't think we went far as far back as those people coming from Realtor.com, and then people like Bill Kelvey created Realtor. When you do that, Michael, I want that to be transcribed because actually, that's a that's a made for TV movie. <laughs> I, I think it's a I think it's going to be a good story. I think Easy Mortgage app actually is, is better as a TV movie than it was maybe sometimes as um you know, everything it, it needed to be. So a uh, Joe can probably attest to that. He'd have a big, what actor would play Joe, I guess would be the question. Uh, even Bill would have a cameo. Um, uh, and he used to provide some mentors to me. Uh, he's very involved in the MIT and, and FinTech community here in Boston. And again, a pioneer in the real estate space. Um, sure. So let's what, close what out the show. 2 p.m. next week. Yeah, yeah, of course we're at the bottom of the hour. We're, we're we, you know, we're you know, we're, next week we're going to talk more about the NBA. We got some more to talk about what's going on in technology, mergers and acquisitions, and what has happened and what is going to be happening. Uh, things that are happening this past few weeks, I have seen layoffs on a minor scale with some, some uh, on uh, at the IMBs. The as I looked at my personal um, feeds and and not only LinkedIn but also Facebook, because not, not, you don't you don't necessarily see people's layoffs on on LinkedIn. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. But you definitely get to see it on Facebook when they're asking for for help, work, or other things. And my experience in talking to life insurance companies on capital markets, some, some interesting stuff that's going on, what they're wanting to buy versus what the GSEs are doing. 
and in regards to inventory and stuff like that. Next week's show should be jam-packed on what's going on. And I'm excited to come back and talk with you, Michael. So thanks for thanks for sharing. And we had, and we will definitely see everyone next week on Thursday. I know this last week and this week it's up done on Friday, but you know, this next next Thursday, next Friday, Michael, I think there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be unpacking on LinkedIn, especially in uh, not only at the sweet suite level, but in technology. So thanks for everyone that joined us today. Uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys next week.